Welcome back everybody and welcome to our online students. Today what we're going to do is take a look at, what are we looking at? Ah, chemical bonding, three different types of chemical bonds. And then later on uh, we're going to take a look at, at naming compounds. Now to get us started, um, we are eventually going to take the stuff that we learned and apply it to how we understand climate change how climate change is a thing and what is the chemistry behind the greenhouse effect. And it has to do with this, this compound called carbon dioxide that gets up into our atmosphere. And electromagnetic radiation hits the carbon dioxide and does some strange things to it. It causes it to do something. And this leads to climate change. And so we need to understand a little bit of physics and a little bit of chemistry to be able to explain or understand what's happening with climate change. And we've done some of these things already. We've talked about different types of electromagnetic radiation, including infrared, which we think of as heat energy. We've also talked about uh, valence electrons. These are the electrons in the outermost energy level, the ones that are involved in chemical bonding. And then we're going to take a look at the three types of chemical bonds, how that relates to it. And we're going to talk a little bit about carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So all of these things are going to come together and then the next time somebody comes up to you and says, climate change, Pfft, yeah, that, that's, that's all made up like the earth is round and people walked on the moon. And you can go, well, actually, let me explain the science to you. Okay, uh, all right, so very powerful stuff. Now, to get us started here, we're going to start out with ionic bonds. Ionic bonds are when we have electrons taken from one atom to another. So here is a diagram here of one atom giving an electron to another. This kind of reminds me of me and the missus about some years ago. Um, went to a store and, and, and started picking out rings. And she wanted, she's like, ooh, sparkly, I like that, right? And then I'm like, ooh, that looks expensive. And then and, and I asked the salesperson, do you have anything a little bit cheaper? And, and he says, yeah, but you can't put a price on love. I'm going, oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so giving up electrons, gaining electrons, this is, this is the definition of an ionic bond. And in an ionic bond, we have this difference in charge. And we call this an electrostatic potential. Electrostatic potential. And there's an equation for this. It looks like this. It tells us that our energy and our electrostatic potential here is equal to Q1 times Q2 over D. And, and what this means is Q, that, that's not a Q, that's an O. There we go. So what this means is the Q is the charge, charge on atom, and then D, D is going to be the bond length. And the bond length is just adding up the radii of the two different atoms. So for example, if we have um, one atom like this, and then another atom like this, and we think of this one as positive and this one as negative, then the radius of one, this distance here, the radius, plus the radius of the other, like this. We add these two up and that gives us our bond length. Now, we're not gonna put numbers on this, but we know that certain elements on our periodic table are bigger than others, right? What's the biggest, fattest element on the periodic table? Francium, Francium. awesome, okay. So we know that there's differences in these. Now, if I were to ask you then, um, how tightly or how much energy does it take to pull two atoms apart from each other if they are in an ionic compound, we can make a comparison. So, for example, if we had two different um, compounds here, we had NaCl, sodium chloride, and then if we also then had KCl, potassium chloride, okay? Two different um, ionic compounds here. Oh, how do we know that they're ionic? 
How do we know that they are ionic? Because they contain metal and a non-metal. Yes, that, there, there was a few people who got that wrong on the test. Okay, I'm not gonna point at anybody, but there were a few people, I'm just saying, that was a thing. So ionic compounds, metal and non-metal, metal and non-metal. Okay, so that's how we know that it's an ionic compound. Now let's compare these two. Which one of these two is gonna be harder to pull apart? Okay, well, let's take a look at their charges here. Sodium, it, look at where it is on, its period, on the periodic table. Sodium, what kind of a charge is gonna be positive? How much? One. Okay, so we're gonna one plus. And then chlorine is gonna be negative one. Okay, eh, one negative, okay. And then potassium is gonna be positive. You, you see a pattern here? Okay, okay, so plus one, okay. Now, if we put that into the equation here, we would say here that this is um, plus one, okay, like this for Q1, and then Q2 is going to be minus one, all right? And then down below, we're gonna have some distance between these two, and we'll get back to that. Now, for this one here, it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna go plus one, and then we're gonna go minus one, like that, we're gonna multiply them together. Now, we're going to take the absolute value of these because we don't like having negative numbers. Negative numbers are confusing, and so we're just gonna go absolute value of these, okay, like that. So now, everything's the same between these two. The difference is going to be in the radii, okay? So the question is, which one of these is further apart? If they're further apart, they're gonna be easier to pull apart. If they're closer together, they're gonna to be harder to pull apart. So chlorine is the same. So then between these two, between sodium and potassium, which one's bigger? Potassium, because it has more energy levels, right? So I'm just gonna put here, I'm just gonna say potassium's a little bit bigger and sodium's a little bit smaller. So then for my distance between, because chlorine's the same, my distance between these two, so I'm gonna have a small number here. I'm just gonna go small number. This one here is going to be a larger number, okay? And I don't know what those numbers are. They're, they're gonna be in angstroms, but who cares? If this number is small, then that makes my energy big. And if this number is big, then that makes my energy small. Okay, so that means then it should be easier to pull potassium chloride apart than sodium chloride. This will be easier to pull apart than this. So then the next question is, if you were to try to put these in a pan and melt them, which one should melt first? What do you think? Potassium chloride should melt first. Yeah, because it's easier to pull apart. Oh my gosh. You could predict relative melting points of, of compounds just by looking at the periodic table. Powerful stuff. This is, why, this is why you never hear of unemployed chemists. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, covalent bonds. Covalent bonds, this is where we share electrons. So electrons are being shared. This is, this is a nice sort of relationship here. You've got kind of an exchange there. It's not that one person's giving something up. They're, they're both sharing. That's kind of nice, I like that. So in a covalent bond, in a covalent bond, we are going to be sharing electrons. So it's a bond created by sharing um, one or more pairs of electrons, one or more pairs of electrons. And what I wanna do here is, is I wanna make like a little table, kind of like a little cheat sheet here of our chemical bonds. So I'm gonna say types of chemical bonds types of chemical bonds. And then I'm gonna say um, over here, elements involved. And then I'm gonna say electron distribution. Uh, 
and then an example. Okay. And we'll go like this, and like this, okay, like that. And then we're going to do ionic. And then we're going to do covalent. And then we'll do one more metallic. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get back to um, covalent here. Elements involved in covalent bonds. Hmm. Hmm. And then also, um, where are the electrons? Well, the electrons, these are shared. The electrons are shared. And the types of elements involved in covalent bonding are nonmetals. And metal and or metalloids. So nonmetals and nonmetals or nonmetals and metalloids would be covalent bonds. And you already identified here that our ionics are, are metals, metals with non metals. Metals with non-metals, okay. Oh, and if you had to guess, metal and metal, right? Okay, so we're going to say metal, metal with metal. Okay, metal with metal. And then our ionic compounds, our electrons are being, one gives up an electron, one picks up an electron. So I'm going to say transferred. transferred. So somebody gives up an electron, somebody gains an electron. And then with our metals, oh, we have our metals, oh, we haven't gotten to that yet, but, but our, our electrons are going to be pooled. And, and what does that mean? That means that the, the electrons are going to be shared by the other atoms such that they can flow. And we think of that is like conducting electricity. So metals conduct electricity, those electrons will flow through the material. They don't stay near any particular atom. They, they can flow, all right? So transferred, shared, and then pooled, that allows them to flow. And then some examples of these. So ionic compound, we have NaCl, sodium chloride. Covalent compounds, these are going to be nonmetals. So um, like H2 or O2 or CO2, these, these will all be um, covalent. And then metallic, this could be like copper metal, conducts electricity. Um, or say nickel, conducts electricity. All right, and then, ah, uh, yes, our metals. Uh, so our metals, our metallic bonds. This is going to be um, a bond consisting of well, of, of the nuclei just sitting in a pool of electrons, or like a sea of electrons that can flow. Those electrons can flow, and that's why these are good conductors of electricity. 